It's hot. It's hot. How would you how would you assess training camp is going for you guys in terms of just learning everything that you need to learn and process before the start of the season? Yeah, um, it's a grind. It's a grind to come in and every day and learn your assignments and learn your techniques. And um, I think the guys have been doing a pretty good job, myself included, on just listening to the coaches and just telling us um, what we need to do each and every day. And uh, our goal is just to get 1% better every day. And uh, that's what we come out here to do. Your unit getting back guys yesterday with Bilal, with Jonathan, how big is that for you, especially with the training camp less than two weeks away from ending? Yeah, it's huge. Um, anytime you get guys like Bilal and, and Hank back, um, this would be my third year with Hank, so it's, I love seeing him on the football field every day. So um, he, he just brings a new energy, uh, Bilal as well, and um, it just adds to the group and the dynamics of, of our group and what we can do. What's been the biggest aspect of your game that you've been focused on working on this training camp? Yeah, um, I came in as a as a decent decent pass rusher, um, especially on the inside, and I just wanted to kind of establish myself as as, as the inside pass rusher. Um, and then I challenged myself every day uh, in the run. Um, coaches challenged me to come out every day and make sure I'm using my hands, playing with extension, doing everything I need to do to be able to defeat blocks and um, get off of blocks at a, at a at a good rate. What's the biggest difference in what you're asked to do in this defense as compared to in the past? Um, this defense um, requires me to be able to be that that pass rusher on the inside because with guys like Max and and Chan, you know, you, you know, the slides going you know, always come to one of those two. So um, I just got to be able to make sure I'm doing my job on the inside. Um, and be able to kind of be that dynamic player. I've kind of been asked to do play, you know, kind of know every position. Um, and that's kind of the same as, as past, but um, it, it's really an emphasis this year for me. Understanding that, um, where, what's the balance of also not forsaking the run as well when, you're, when your intent is to get to the quarterback, but not forgetting that part of the game as well? Yeah, that, no, that's a challenge uh, that coach gives me every day just to make sure I am playing you know, the run, because at the end of the day, you can't get to the quarterback if you don't stop the run. And every day I go out and just making sure it's in my head every single day that, you know, if, if I want to get rushes, if I want to get rushes on third down, you know, we got to be able to make sure we stop the run first. The ups and downs of trying to solidify yourself on this roster since you've gotten here. How much confidence do you have going into this season as opposed to other seasons? Uh, my confidence never really wavers. Um, I just got a, I got a job to do. I come out there, do my job every day. Um, and kind of br try to bring the guys with me. Um, I try to bring that energy to our group that, that I feel like that I can bring and we need, and I'm um, just trying to do that every day. So. You talked about that importance of stopping the run. There, there's been some stretches in the first couple of preseason games where it's kind of been a challenge for you guys. Is that, is that just a learning process? Is that you know when you're actually game planning for teams, it'll be different, or is there some concern in, in terms of how that's done? No, we're just learning. We're, we're learning. Um, I, I think... You know, I, that's why you do play the preseason, so you can learn. Um, you know, I, I think the preseason is, is very important for teams like us, especially because um, we do have that new staff and um, they bring in their philosophies and stuff like that. So, you know, working in the preseason, um, it's not, it's never going to be perfect, but we strive every day to make sure we're playing with the right technique, and um, I, I think we're getting just getting better every single day. I said that you spent a year in Canadian football. Yeah. yeah. What? I mean, it's a different game. Over yeah. There. Um, did that help you at all uh, in terms of you know your development? Yeah, I, it's probably the best thing I've, I've done for my career, to be honest with you. Um, you know, looking looking back at it, um, I know in the Canadian Football League is is a lot different than the NFL, and um, the one thing I, I learned out there is that you have to be able to pass rush, <laughs> and I kind of brought that with me from from Canada, so. Um, you know, it, it was a great learning experience going up there, and I, I like it. I like it a lot better down here, though. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have talked about like the noticeable difference between the two different coaching styles from past to now. What for you has been the most, uh, I guess, enjoyable change or the most noticeable change in the two teams from previous coaches? Oh yeah, no, it was a great experience with both staffs. Um, but uh, with this one, uh, I think they're letting me just be me. You know, um, they they know what I can do. 
Um, and they challenged me every single day. And that's the first thing I, I told my D-line coach is that I just I want I want you to push me hard. I want you to coach me. And he's done that. Um, and he can, he'll continue to do that and just push me every single day um, to be the player that I want to be and that I know I can be. So. Just too, though, what's it like working with Rob Ryan, somebody that's had so much experience? Man, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, anytime you get a, a guy with that type of pedigree, you know, you, everybody knows his family, um, or what they bring to the table. And anytime you can just be in a room and just learn from him, um, you know, you, you take down everything, you write down everything he says because um, he wants you to be successful and he, he's been doing it for a long time. So he's seen, he's seen it the right way. But like you guys went to an unscripted today, yeah. um, uh, kind of eleven on eleven, and you know, react to what's ha- happening organically. Um, what kind of challenge is that, and also um, how uh, how productive can that be? And also, look, watching your coaches communicate with themselves mm-hmm. and along with you is that, is that a little bit of a change from from maybe staffs of the past? Um, no, we, I mean we've had play it outs ever since I've been here, um, but it, it just works on communication. Um, because in the game, it's, it's as realistic as it's going to get. Um, got to be able to communicate. Got to be able to listen uh, when things are going fast. And I think that's just getting us prepared for for games and and what's to come. Because you always got to be prepared for every single situation. And coach does a great job in putting us in every single situation, um, so we can be prepared for that. So. How different is Edmonton from Las Vegas? <laughs> uh, there's no strip. It's <laughs> no strip. Uh, a lot of oil factories. Uh, you know, but it was a great experience, though. I, I love Edmonton. I definitely, I'll go back as, as many times as I can. Earlier today, saw you taking some time just to coach Malcolm. And what does it mean to you to have a young player that's such a good listener? Yeah, man, Malcolm. Malcolm's been a great listener ever since he's gotten here. Um, you know, he, he's gone through his ups and downs as well. Um, but he always wants to learn and he's getting better. And, and every time I talk to him, he listens. Um, and I, I listen back. I get his feedback as well because you never know what's going through a young player's mind like that. And um, you always want to get feedback from him. And it's always good. Malcolm's my dog, so he, he's, he doesn't take it personal. You mentioned Max and, and what he brings to a to to defensive line and, and what he can do. He has great great days all the time, but today he was he was just kind of really on one, it seemed like, out on the field. When, when he gets into a rhythm like that is – like, do you guys know it? Do you sense it? Like, how, how do you kind of respond to that? Um, Max don't change <laughs> from day to day. Like, he, he don't change. I see the same Max every single day. So you just got to match. You got to match his energy. Um, it's crazy. I mean, y'all have seen he'd be running around. He, it seems like he don't get tired. Like, and if he does get tired, he's lying because uh, he just makes everybody else look slow. But, um, no, the energy he brings every single day and the leadership he's been bringing, um, it's unmatched, man, and I just love love playing with him. It makes my job easier. What do you think about his ranking at 59 in the top 100? Um, <laughs> it's a little low, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he'll take that personal. Um, he, obviously, he wants to win, so yeah, I don't think he's too fixated on that, but I'm sure it'd be in the back of his head. You know? I know you guys don't like looking too far ahead, but joint practices are next week. How nice will it be to see some new faces out there? Oh, you know, it's... It, this practice, you know, we'll, we just got to get better every single day. Um, um, Patriots will be in town, so um, it's just new faces to play against, new faces to rush against and play to run and all that stuff. So um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We've got two days to, to beat each other up before the game. So. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I mean, uh, talked to uh, Coach earlier today about uh, competition and clean slates for everyone. He said that from the very beginning, it seems they followed through. Can you talk about that in terms of as a player, uh, liking that part of it that you know you can compete for a spot and it's just not given to people? Yeah. Um, the clean slate was especially good for me because I feel like the last five years of my career, I kind of just wasn't as serious as I should have been, whether it was nutrition, weight, mentality. Like, I wasn't all in. And... You know, Josh coming knowing who I was and who I am um, has, I, I benefited a lot from that. You know, just being able to recreate myself this year, recreate the type of player I am and person I am has been really good for me. And then to have him and Dave here and just, you know, just show me how confident they are in me and what I can do and just keep pushing me forward has been really dope. You got more serious, like you said, about the diet and conditioning and all that. Do you feel it tangibly? Uh, oh, yeah, on the field? 100%. Like, it's funny because if you watch my tape from 
when I was in New England, you know, my set, it looks like I'm just like a big blob, just, you know, really trying to force myself back there. And now I'm having to slow down because I'm a lot quicker than I used to be. Um, you know, and I lost a lot of weight because I used to be, you know, real plump. So, um, the, yeah, I definitely feel the difference out there. And then also when it comes to conditioning, too, I'm able to go on 13, 14, 15 play drives. And although I'm like somewhat tired, I'm not as tired as I used to be, you know, coming to the sideline, needing the gas tank to, you know, get me going again. So, you know, it's definitely been beneficial. To get off a tackle, you, you can see it definitely you're moving quicker, uh, mm -hmm. getting your pass pro. Uh, do you, I know you play guard as well, but do you kind of prefer tackle? Do you feel like you're a better fit at tackle? I have my preference. Obviously, I, I love tackle, but if, you know, something happened during the season and then they were like, maybe we need to slide into guard, I wouldn't, I think I'd be perfectly fine in there because I started out at guard in Baltimore and then, you know, got moved out to tackle later in the year. So, you know, I pride myself on being able to play both positions and hopefully play them at a high level. How, dif how difficult is it to switch from multiple sides, from the left to the right to the guard spot like you did even in the game on mm -hmm. Sunday? Um, it's tough, you know, going from right to left, especially when you're more on one side during practice is tough. But, you know, it's the NFL. You have to be ready for any opportunity you get. And, you know, for me to start at left tackle during that game was a hell of an opportunity to show people in this organization and around the league that, you know, if given the chance, I can do that as well and play right tackle also. And, you know, I got the opportunity a couple of years ago, and I didn't really take full advantage of that when I was in New England. You know, I was like I said, I was overweight. I was real sloppy. And I left a bad taste in my mouth and, you know, everyone else's mouth of, you know, me playing left tackle. So I took that as an opportunity to show people, you know, I'm doing this again, but this time I'm completely different. I'm a new player out there and, you know, I'm going to keep trying to show that every single week. I mean, you talked about diet. Obviously, you said you were just sloppy um, in New England. What kind of things are you eating to clean up your diet to kind of help mold your game without losing any of that lateral agility? Because obviously size matters down in the trenches. So I just want to know what's your diet like? Straight protein. There you go. No vegetables. Straight protein. Vegetables make you fat. No, I'm playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine, you are a veteran. So you've been around this league a long time. We, Thayer is a guy that's come in. He was not a high draft pick, but he's making a little bit of a move. What do you see from him? What do you like about his game? I think from the spring to the summer to training camp, he's gotten a lot better. You know, you could see... He had his rookie moments, and he still has his rookie moments. You know, he's a rookie. You, you know, you expect a rookie to, you know, have some things like that. But he gets better every single day. He takes the coach in, in the room and applies it on the field. Um, he just works his butt off every single time he's out there. And, you know, anytime I give him a pointer, I'm like, hey, put your hands here. Hey, look at your feet. Look at your hips. You know, square them up more. You know, raise your hands. You know, don't put your hand into a block. He takes that and he listens to it. And he, like, you know, he does that. I think he's going to be a hell of a player as long as he, you know, can stay out of his own head and, you know, listen to the coaching and also just goes out there and balls, you know. I think this I think as a rookie, you have so much pressure on you, you know, there's so many expectations. You know, first you gotta make the team and then if you're thrust into a starting role or like a big time role, then you gotta, you know, perform. And, you know, knowing there he's gonna be a big part of the team this year whatever his role is, and I think he's ready for whatever role that is, just because how he comes to work every single day. Also, to talk about that diet thing, you know, I forgot about one thing. No sugar, and they have no sugar. Maybe, like, maybe one day, you know, I'm a sweet guy, so I had to, you know, throw some cakes in there, you know, but it doesn't matter because I still lost the weight. They can't tell me nothing. I heard that you spoke a lot with Max about trying to up your game. What kind of lessons or things that you can take away from talking with Max? Yeah, um, like I said before, Max has been a huge blessing for my career as a player and a person because, you know, like I said, I didn't really take um, the, I didn't really take football that serious. And, you know, I kind of um, just, you know, I was one foot in, one foot out. And just seeing how Max approaches the game, like I said, with his nutrition, with the way he works every single day, you know, going balls to the walls every single play, you know, the conditioning after, before, like, you know, everything he does kind of just, you know, that's the player I want to be. I want to be just, you know, just like him, honestly. You know, he's one of the best in the league at what he does. And he wasn't, obviously, he's blessed with talent, but he worked for everything he got. Every single thing he got, he worked for. And he deserves everything just because he puts all the work in to be that player. And seeing a guy like him do all that, you know, showed me that it was possible to do that. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. If I can follow in his footsteps, you know, fix my diet, 
do what I need to do on the field, and then, you know, everything else that happens, then I'll be real happy with it. And obviously, I'm working my butt off to become that type of player, too. Um, how much do you appreciate this, and how much of an inspiration for other people do you think that can be? I'm being completely honest. This is like damn near my third, fourth chance because, you know, I had a starting, I was starting in Baltimore um, my third year. And well, I started actually my rookie year, I got to start. And if I did what I needed to do, then, you know, I would have kept that spot, but it got taken from me. And then my third year in Baltimore, I started left guard, but I was overweight. And then I ended up getting traded in New England. And then my second year in New England, I was starting a right tackle, but once again, I was overweight and I wasn't really doing what I needed to do. And as soon as I got hurt, they replaced me because I didn't earn that job. And then, you know, last year I was doing what I need, I, you know, I was in there, but I didn't fully commit to it and I didn't do what I need to do on the field and I got replaced again. So, you know, in my eyes, this is my last opportunity to really become the player I want to become or I'm just going to be a backup role player the rest of my career. So I'm taking, I'm doing everything I can to make this happen. And, you know, I'm doing everything possible to achieve everything I want to achieve in this game because, you know, not everyone is lucky enough to get as many opportunities and chances that I have. And, you know, Josh coming here and Dave coming here, you know, they didn't say it, but in my mind, this is my last opportunity. So if I don't achieve what I want to achieve this year, then that's my fault. We've, uh, we've heard you talk about your doctor. Um, Malcolm Johnson said you have the worst food takes on the team. Well, all we know that you said is that Manny is overrated. That's accurate. Uh, so what, why does Malcolm think your food takes is so bad? I can't say it on camera, honestly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a setup right there. Y'all trying to catch me. Um, Jakob is jealous that I'm from the great country of England, and he is from the second or third best, actually probably third best country of Germany, I'm saying that because I'm on camera. It's, you know, never, I've never been there, but I think he always wanted to be English. And so, you know, I don't know what the E in Germany was, schnitzel? What's schnitzel? Like a fried chicken? Like, they call it schnitzel? And what do they call wieners over there? We, like, I don't even know. Like, and the beer isn't, you know, beer's better in England. You know? He said he loves English food. He just doesn't want to admit it. I think Yacht has the worst taste in everything. Everything. You know, TV, food. Clothes, shoes, <laughs> hair. I mean, honestly, his hair was, you know, no, don't even get me started on his hair in New England. I was just, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I think he's just jealous that I'm from England and he's not, and I have a cool accent and he doesn't, you know. So, <laughs> I don't know, you know, you kind of make, you know, not everyone likes you. Sometimes you got to roll with it. And, you know, yak is yak. Plus, I mean, yeah. So what I'm very excited for it. I've seen, um, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm seeing that they're bringing like a different attitude to it and they're practicing really hard. I also have a, like a bunch of friends still on that team and I think it's going to be really competitive. Um, I think it's going to be a really good two days of practice between us and I think all of us are going to get a lot better from going against that competition. There's a lot of good players over there, you know, Judon. Dietrich, um, LG, Lawrence Guy, um, was it Christian Barrymore? Yeah, you know, I've watched tape on him. He's a great player. Um, and then Uche, they have a bunch of great D linemen over there who are really technically sound and really good at what they do. So I think all of us are going to benefit from going against someone else and, you know, going against that competition. Having played for Bill Belichick, is there an office character that matches up with him? <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Obviously, the NFL's tried to make a footprint internationally. Do you feel like you've been an inspiration to a lot of young kids in England about American football and maybe following you? I hope so. Um, you know, hopefully they're following me this year instead of the last couple of years because I don't feel like I've done the best job of being an inspiration to them. You know, I'm work obviously. You know, making it to the NFL, coming from England was a hell of an accomplishment, but I want to do more than just be known as a kid as, you know, moved there from England and made it to the NFL. You know, yeah, I made it to the NFL, but I want to do way more than that. And then, you know, once I accomplish all those goals, show kids that, you know, it's possible to move from another country, come over here and play football and play at a high level. It doesn't matter when you start. As long as you're determined and you really want to do it and you believe in yourself, you can accomplish whatever. On just the way Max has, has pushed you, like you said, about what, watching how he works and stuff, what's it like just lining up against him at practice? It's dope. It's, you know, um, 
I truly believe him and Chandler have helped me become a player that I never knew I could become just because they work so hard. And in order to keep up with them, you have to become a different type of player. You know, you have to be outside your comfort zone. You have to, you know, work even harder when you're tired. You have to get 1% better every single day because if you don't, they are, and they're getting better every single day. Um, and if you don't buy into what the coaches are teaching and what they're telling you to do and just, you know, try, like trying to help you out there, then it will be hard to go out there every single day and block them without getting your butt whooped, you know. Um, you know, I talk to Max all the time, Chandler, too, and just – it's just been such a blessing having both of those two in my career and, you know, helped me every single step of the way, you know, making sure my hands are right, you know, set, telling me about my set, if I set too wide, if I set too deep, if I set too, you know, short, if I didn't, you know, kick enough, you know, it's just been such a blessing having them, both of them here. And, you know, I have to bring my A game every single day because if I don't, you know, like they said, I'm in a competition. So I have to bring it every single day to show these coaches that I'm the guy because every single one in that everyone in that room is bringing it every single day and it would be unfair to them if I don't bring my best effort every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Practice. You get to battle Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, two all pros. How much does that help you? get better and just show on tape reasons for a new staff for your spot. It definitely helps. Uh, not only me, but the whole DB, the whole DB group. You know, uh, we got a very competitive DB group, and they one of the best. You know, those guys are one of the best in the uh, league. So it's it's always a great opportunity to go against them each and every day. I think this is your third defensive coordinator in three years in the NFL. Uh, you know, you might have got to be flexible. That's pretty obvious. Um, have you we've gotten to a point where you're able to sort of expedite the process of understanding a new defense quicker and doing it in a quicker way? Definitely. Uh, believe it or not, uh, no, nothing towards the, the you know, the defense last year. But honestly, I think this defense is, I, I wouldn't say better, but it's easier for uh, me, you know, uh, learning different positions as far as nickel and uh, corner. So overall, you know, everything has been going great as far as learning the defense. You guys got your hands on a lot of balls today. Um, couple of interceptions. Yeah. Uh, this is probably the most energetic I've seen you guys as a group. Yeah. What, what was said in the meeting room this morning for you guys to come out like this uh, and have great practice? I mean, you know, a, a defensive coordinator like PG, you know, is, he, he said, man, it's time for us to, you know, pick it up a notch and kind of get our hands on the ball, you know. So uh, that was our mindset. You know, that was our mindset to not only compete and have a great day, but also get those turnovers because turnovers change changes games. And, you know, PG's looking for ball hawks. So that's what we have to every, each and every day. When you got here, uh, that, that cornerback room was pretty young. Yeah. Um, yourself and a bunch of other guys, very young players. Uh, do you sense that there's – a little bit more experience, a little more veteran presence um, in that room now. Definitely, definitely. Each each individual learn from from each other. You know, uh, uh, Nate learns from Rock. Rock learns from Trayvon. I learn from you know each and you know all of them because I'm always an open book. So each and that, like you know all of us learn from each other. You know we don't we feel like we are we are brotherhood. Of course we we compete, but we still you know we still act like a brotherhood. I know we all. I mean. I covered you at Louisiana Tech. You had that swagger. You, know, you played with a nasty mean streak. Yeah. Even for a boundary cornerback, you claimed the slot and so forth. Uh, my question to you is where do you get that swagger from, and do you kind of play with a chip on your shoulder knowing that when you're going across someone who may be a little bit taller, yeah. maybe a little bit faster, they're not going to be a little bit more physical? I think the, sw I think the swagger part came from it's just, it's just something that I was born with. Um, and I feel like when, you know, me being a smaller guy, and I think it's, it's just opportunity. So you got to have a chip on your shoulder to, you know, competing against the best. When you're in the NFL, you have to have a chip on your shoulder. So uh, I think me coming out each and every day, I have a point to prove not only to other people but myself. So that was my goal this year, to not only prove it to everyone else but prove it to myself. What's been your impressions of Chris Ash as a DB's coach? Uh, Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris, my guy, you know, we don't really meet too much, you know, because, you know, the safeties and DB room kind of separate, but when we out there, you know, me and him kind of sit a lot, he called me Dynamite, you know, because he says that, uh, you know, I'm a little guy, but, you know, I kind of play bigger than what I what I really am, so, yeah, me and Coach Ash has a, have a great relationship. What about Jason? Simmons? Yeah. Yeah, Jay, Jay, that's my guy, you know, he... He, re, you know, he relates to a lot of the DBs. You know, we, we respect him. You know, because we feel like he's the leader in our uh, room. So, yeah. Overall, Jason's Jason Simmons is a very, very great uh, coach.
You mentioned that chip on your shoulder. Uh, how, how big in your mind is this game coming up on Saturday against Miami? I think it's very big, you know, because at the end of the day, it's it's opportunity to show the world what not only I can do, but, you know, my other teammates, you know, who, we want to come out there and win. I understand it's the preseason, but we treat it like it's a regular season game because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game. It's televised. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to show, you know, not only the stuff we do at practice, you know, but we also want to show everybody that, you know, we are, we are a great team. How, how do you think the first two games have gone as far as, you know, picking up the defense and understanding yeah. what everyone's tr- supposed to be doing? I think it's going smooth, but we're not what we want to uh, be. You know, of course, at each and every day you have to improve. You know, of, of course, we came out with the win, but we, we feel like we have a lot of stuff to, you know, kind of get better each and every day, you know, 1% better each and every day. How big, how big was it for you being able to play on Sunday night at Allegiant? It was very big. You know, I missed the first game due to, you know, an injury. I did. I think I I could have played better. You know, I was very aggressive. But this game, I think I'd be I'd be better than I was last last game. Far as you know, far as you know, using my techniques and um, slowing the game down. So I expect this game to be better than the first one. Everybody knows it's a business. Guys come and go all the time. But uh, to lose uh, Tyree the other day, how difficult was that? Say it again. To lose Tyree the other day to when he straight away, how difficult was that? I can't really. I can't. Oh, uh, Gillespie leaving. How difficult was that for the room? It's I mean, it, it was. It was shocking. You know, it was shocking. But I understand that it's a. It's a business, you know, so, uh, you know, best of luck to him. You know, I reached out to him, you know, um, asked him how he, how he was mentally. And he understand the process. You know, at the end of the day, he still have an opportunity to go play, you know, um, at a, another team. So, I mean, I, I think he'll be fine. Potentially playing against him week two? How would that be? I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. You know, uh, can't wait to see how he how he progress. You know, he's a, he's a good football player. You know, he's young. So, I think he'll do well there. Okay. Thank y'all. Thanks, Thanks, man. Thank you.